Alright. How's how's it going guys? My name is the Fallen Sanctum, hashtag open closet, hashtag freshly clean uh freshly showered I should say. <laughs> uh and today we're gonna be talking about something important. The case ratios in uh B T ten for Rise of the Unison Warrior, Dragon Ball Super T C G. Now I have a lot of critiques, a lot of compliments, a lot of things that I want to go over because I spent seven hours cracking with my friend cracking. Uh, no, it's not seven hours. Sorry, five hours cracking five cases. So each each case took about an hour to crack, and I'm not even done sorting and stuff like that. But I wanna I wanna go a few over the few nitpicks first because I feel like I want to get it off my chest. All right, so first and foremost, yeah, this uh, this video is not going to have any course language, but uh, it's going to feature, like, the word suck, the word crap, the word, you know, if you don't like these words, just click out the video, but, I mean, you know, if you don't mind them, if you don't mind hearing what I have to say on the topic, because, you know, I am a person of experience when it comes to these things, because, you know, I don't do this for a living, but let's just say I'm versed in cracking cases. I've, I've done it for a while. It's, it's a fun hobby of mine, all right? So, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video, like I always say. All right, let's start. The first, first off, the nitpicks. Why are rares not foil? That makes no sense. This game is turning into Magic the Gathering. I feel like every set, we're getting closer to MTG. Now, why do I say this? All right, so rares used to be foil, but then they were shatter foil. But before they were shatter foil, in set three and before, the rares were cool. They were like double R's and Vanguard. You know, they were shiny. They weren't Shatter Foil. Shatter Foil hurt this game so much that after like six or seven sets of every person playing the game complained about it, Bandai is like, fine, no more Shatter Foil. So set nine finally was Shatter Foil free. And then set 10, they're like, all right, well, let's blow that idea out the window. We're not giving you back Shatter Foils. But rares are not foil anymore. It's like, what? Rares have always been foil. And now it's that's a pain in the ass, to be honest. Because now, um, it added like literally an extra 40. It's, it's going to add literally another two hours of work to sort rare foils, uncommon foils, and common foils. Why well, I, I could have had a pile of just common and uncommon foils and rares. All right, first, that's that's my first nitpick out of the way. I don't I don't, I don't know why, but because there's an increased amount of cards, different kinds of cards you can get in the set, the super rares got hit. Now, the super rares, right? The meta cards, you know, the cards that are most often super duper OP Omega meta, all right? They got nerfed to, to sucky poo poo hell. Sucky poo poo heck, yeah. I nerfed the sucky poo poo heck. All right, so normally you buy a case. You normally have four of each super rare, at least. At least, right? No. Some cases, I feel like I had one or two of an SR. So, like, I'm spending a thousand plus dollars to get two copies of a $20 card. But I'm cracking 12 boxes. And I'm cracking 288 booster packs. And out of those 288, you got to tell me that I have to pull the $5 super rare like five or six times. And I, I can only pull the card I actually want twice in an entire case. It's like, come on, Bandai. This makes no flipping sense. This makes no flipping sense, Bandai. I don't know why the, the case ratios have to be so bad. But, like, can we go back to stable numbers where, like, if you tell us one case will have, say, six of each super rare, uh, one to two of each SPR. I don't care about the SPRs. Like, if it's one to two, one to two of each SPR per case, I'm fine with that because that means I, on a good roll, I can finish with up to, like, two play sets. On a bad roll, I finish with a play set. Of each SPR. And I, I was fine with that. But the super rares are what carry a case. The super rares are what, you know, like, are where the money's at in a case. Like, the SPRs, sure, they're nice. But you chose half the SPRs you chose are the crap SRs. Like, you didn't choose Dormant Potential. You chose Freeza Charismatic Villain. But, you know, 
like you didn't choose Son Goku Rival Seeker. A Goku missing out on a SPR is rare. Normally Bandai likes to cash out on all their Goku fandom and just give Goku whatever the heck Goku wants. But this is a set where Goku did not get an SCR. Goku did not get an SPR. Goku's dad got an SPR instead. And you know that like Goku just has a really good super rare. And some crappy commons and uncommons, you know. So it's like, it's, it's really bad. It's really bad. The case ratios got hit that bad. SCRs, you know, there's always three. And you always get two in a case. So, I mean, I wish they would just make it one of each a case. So if you spend $1,000, you can make money off the case. If you're a player or if you're a store, you know, you don't have to worry about the hassle about pre-selling SCRs. I feel like I feel like that's a problem, right? Because, you know, like, if I crack four cases, I will get eight SCRs. But I will not know what SCRs I get until the very last moment. And so uh, it makes pre-selling singles pretty hard. Like, all right, I'll give you an example. I put 12 of each super rare for sale. I almost couldn't fulfill the orders. That's how bad it was. Like, I don't, I don't understand, Bandai. I cracked 60 boxes. It's five cases. And I barely had three play sets of cards. It's like... Some I probably have 20 to 30. Don't worry about that. I bet that that useless Wolf Fang Fist at $6, yo, I bet I have a million copies. Oh, or that Bunny Girl Bomber, I bet I have a hundred million copies. So. You know, like, it's always, it, it, it feels like Bandai is the new Konami. Like, like Bandai, Wizards, and Konami, they, you know, I bet they talk to each other. They're like, yo, how are yo case ratios? What are case ratios, bro? No one talks about that in my business. Well, okay, well, if I buy a, a booster case, am I guaranteed exactly what I want? Hell no. Never. We at Bandai want to make sure that if you, you buy a case, they're going to get screwed over. And Konami's like, yo, we've been doing that for years, and the players just buy and buy and buy. You should have started that from, like, set one. Yeah. Ben, they said, good idea. We'll do that for a second. And the Wizards is like, well, we've been banning random cards for years. You guys should try No. <laughs> and uh, Konami, K Konami and Bandai collectively said no to the Wizards shenanigans you know but wizards is releasing a product almost every two weeks now which is kind of insane wizards is going through the pokemon phase i remember i remember a few years ago pokemon had a product every week to two weeks I, yo, and it was hard on distributors and very hard on players to say do you want to buy this pikachu tin no or do you want to buy this pikachu lunchbox tin or do you want to buy this ultimate pikachu lunchbox tin collectible action figurine box or do you want to watch do you, do you want to buy the pikachu and charmander box do you want to buy the pikachu and charmander tin it's like literally every week it was a random useless product they would reprint a good gx slap it on the box and call it a sale it's like we players, man, we, we knew what Evolutions packs were. So we don't want that garbage, you know? We don't want no $2 packs. And we just back to the video. So, we got the nitpicking out of the way. Also, God Packs. Why one God Pack a case? Give me two to three, please. Or give me more SCRs. I don't care about the God Pack. Give me more SCRs. If you're going to give me one God Pack a case, give me three SCRs a case. That's it. Those are my new picks. Now the compliments. SPRs. They bumped up the ratio of SCRs. You get two SCRs a box. Uh, two SPRs. Uh, super parallel rares, I think. I'm pretty sure it's super parallel rare. SPR. Then you get two box. That's great. And I've got at least almost three play sets of everything. Some of them I've got more than three play sets. And box stoppers. My only other compliment I have for this set. They replaced the useless gosh darn box stopper that was worth 25 cents with a random SR or SPR. And that is great.
But I feel like the odds are rigged. I feel like one in every four, one in every six to eight boxes will have a dormant potential. While one in every three boxes will have a Yamcha or a fucking Bulma. You know? So overall, is it worth cracking a case of BT10? Rise of the Unions and Warrior? No. Is it worth buying singles? Yes. Are singles expensive in the, because of the secondary market of all those buyouts and COVID scalper prices? Yes. So be wary from who you buy from during COVID times, you know? Because people will inflate the price just to be like, it's COVID. You're going to pay the COVID price. If you look at a lot of bills or whatever, you're going to see that there's a, like a COVID charge thing on your bills. It's like, what? You're literally paying, you're paying an inflated price on top of an inflated price sometimes. So, you know, you really got to watch out if, they, if there's a COVID charge or if suddenly your favorite meal at a restaurant is suddenly $5 more and it tastes worse and it looks smaller, that's probably COVID thing. But like, let's change the large to medium, but keep the same price. Let's change the texture, like the quality of the ingredients. Let's use the day old fish. Instead of the brand new fish. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll ask for tip on top of that in the end. Kamehameha snack bar. I'm calling you out. You cheapened out my meal. And charged me extra. Alright guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always. Smash that like button. Destroy that subscribe button. And stay tuned for more awesome content every day on the channel.